Hey everybody, welcome back to The Sublimation Life. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create the doodle font effect just like this one here. It's a very easy technique and I'll show you the software that I use to make it and also the step-by-step -step instructions on how. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is the app. What I use is Inkscape. It's a free downloadable app that you can go into Google, type in Inkscape right here, and it'll have different versions for whatever computer you're using. So go ahead and download the one that works for you. And then we'll go ahead and move forward on the next steps. Once you have Inkscape downloaded and up and running, you're going to see a canvas screen that looks like this. You might have a box in the middle and some things off to the side. That's okay. For now, all you need to worry about is your screen right here. To make your text, what you're going to do is go over to your left sidebar, click on the A icon, and that is your text. We'll click on that. And then we'll drag a box through here. And then you'll go ahead and type your word or phrase that you want to use. Don't worry if it looks small here. You can go over to your upper left icon, the arrow button, and it'll bring up arrows to drag into a larger font. Now to re-choose your font, you'll go ahead and just double click on the word or phrase, and it'll come up like this. You'll go up to your upper left, and this drop box here is your fonts. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in the font that I want. And we'll use that. I'll reposition. You can just click your arrow button again and move it over to where you want it to be. I'll make it a little smaller, just like so. Now, when you're choosing a font to use, make sure it's a little bit thicker like this. That way you get that good doodle effect. The thinner fonts aren't going to work much for this specific project. As you can see, the letters are filled in, and that is how it starts out. From here, what you're going to do is go to your upper bar and push the path and object to path. You're going to click that. And what this does is creates nodes on your image or your text. You don't really need to worry about that so much right now. The main thing is that we can now individually manipulate the letters by double clicking on one and moving it over. Same thing there. And just kind of space them out to where you want them to be. And that way when we get our doodle lines going, it's not going to look all crammed together. And once you have all of your letters positioned, you go ahead and highlight them. And from here, go up to Object. You'll want to do Fill and Stroke, and a box will appear up here right here. There are three lines here that you need to be aware of. There's Fill, Stroke Paint, and Stroke Type. The first thing we want is the Fill, and you're going to push this X button, and that's going to clear your paint on the inside of the text. When you do it, it's going to look like it's disappeared. Don't worry, it hasn't. So go ahead and click that button. And as you can see, it looks like it's gone, but it's not. From here, you'll go to Stroke Paint. And next to the X button, there's a solid flat color button, and you want to press that. And there's your outlined letters that you're going to use for your doodle font. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, just so we can really kind of see what we're doing. I'll move it over. So from here, you can leave it the size you want, the lines, you can make them thinner, thicker, and how you do that is go to stroke style, and right here is where the width is. I like to do mine in inches, but you can use whatever inches or millimeters, centimeters, whatever works for you. You can use the minus or plus buttons, and it'll do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and type mine in, though to 0.130. Now once you have the width of your outline that you like and that you're happy with, you can drag this down for now. We don't need it until um, a little bit later. 
What you're going to do now is make sure everything is still highlighted. We're going to go over to the right side and push the duplicate button right here. It's not going to look like it did anything, but it really did. If you go ahead and click on the word and drag it up, you'll see that there's now two layers. You'll go ahead and put it back if you did that. And then I like to make mine just a little bit bigger, mostly so I can see that there's two layers. But also, we're going to go ahead and drag our fill and stroke back up. And we want to make that secondary outline layer a little bit thinner. That way it looks like more than just one pencil stroke, so it gets that doodly effect. So I'm going to do mine at a 0 0.060. And you can see now the lines are different size, and it kind of gives that like pencil-y looking doodly effect there. At this point, you can either just drag this box back down or just get rid of it altogether. You won't need it till a little bit later if you do. We're going to go ahead and just make that a little bit bigger. The whole thing. Now that you have your two layers, what you're going to do is start manipulating and rotating it. So I like to make it a little bit bigger than the initial letter was. And if you click on that outline again it'll bring up rotation arrows so you can spin them and i like to just rotate mine a little bit kind of gives it that offset look and then just kind of layer it over the top of the original layer so you can see it's just kind of starting to look like more of a pencil doodle than just lines or boxes and you'll continue to do that with all of the letters Okay, so now once you have your outlines in the positions that you want them, you can either leave it as just a two-layered outline, or you can make a third layer and rotate it around just to make more, even more pencil strokes if you want to have that effect. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. We're going to move on how to we make those squiggly lines that kind of go across like here. So with this, you're going to need to go back over to your left bar, you're going to go and click on this button here. It's your Bizarre Curves and Straight Line button. We'll go ahead and click on that. You'll go up to the mode up here. Just make sure that this um, regular Bezier Path button is clicked, and that's all you need to do with it. You'll go onto your screen here, and I like to just go into a white blank spot um, and make one. You'll do a one click, two click, three click and just kind of make the squiggly lines that you want once you have the shape of the squiggle do note that you can see it's still trying to drag and click onto something you'll want to go to your other arrow over here to the left again and click on that and that'll end the dragging process so now you have a squiggle line now what i was saying is going back to the spill and stroke you can see it kind of made it thin. You can go back and thicken it up though if you would like. Okay, so now you can see I made it a little bit thicker. That way it'll kind of match the size of the letters as well. From there, you'll just drag them into the place where you want them. I like to just duplicate because you can also rotate them and put them wherever you want. Also, you can make another one that just has say two zigzags just like that while I'm back in the fill and stroke section I do want to point out as well that if you haven't noticed zooming in here the points are just kind of flat and straight you can make those rounded out so they look more round uh, by going back into the stroke styles portion, the joint you want to have rounded out, and also the cap to round out as well. And now you can see it actually rounds out your ends, and that way it's not just a flat, blunt end, and it looks more rounded. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out of there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and keep putting the squiggle lines in. All right, so now that you have your squiggle lines in place, um, you are gonna do one more step, 
which is make sure everything is combined. So you're going to highlight each letter and its specific squiggles. Make sure you're not getting the other letter squiggles in. You're going to go ahead and group, right click, and then go to group. Go up to path and click union. And this allows you to drag your whole letter without detaching anything. You'll do that with all of the letters. Okay, now once you have all of your letters grouped and unioned, you can now move everything freely and not worry about anything detaching. So everything, you can just kind of put your letters where you want them to be. You can cut, you can um, make out different designs within the letters, and I can go ahead and show you how to do that as well in a follow-up tutorial. But this is how you make the doodle font text. To be able to use it with a cutting machine, you'll go up to your file and then you'll just save as and just make sure that you save it as an SVG file. That way you can load it up into your cutting machine software and it'll still cut as an SVG. Or you can use a PNG if you're planning to do sublimation designs. But this is how you get that doodled look effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if it was helpful for you, go ahead and boop that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share for others so they can get helped as well. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting!